So my name is Tyler Welch, uh, orthopedic surgeon, heart receiver, and land orthopedic sports medicine. We have an office in Wells and York and Portsmouth. Um, this talk is about nasal partial knee replacement, which I don't know if any of you have heard of, but partial knee replacement is when you replace just part of the knee, not the entire knee. So total knee replacement, you replace the entire knee. I'm sure some of you know somebody or have a friend, family member that has had a total knee replacement in the past. Today we're going to talk about a special type of partial knee replacement. Excuse me, do you, that partial resonate the whole knee? The whole knee? No, just part of the knee. We'll, we'll go into that. Yeah, yeah. So that's a good question. We'll, we'll talk about that. But just a little bit my, about myself. I did my training at Boston University, so I was at Boston for seven years. I then did a fellowship in uh, Los Angeles, a sports medicine fellowship. So I do mostly arthroscopic surgery, hip and knee, especially, and shoulder. Now, partial knee replacement is an interesting field in orthopedics because it's sort of, it's, there are some guys who do joint replacement special fellowships. I did a sports fellowship. Partial knee replacement is where we kind of converge because the idea of a partial knee replacement is you're trying to save some of the ligaments and the meniscus. Some of the structures we need it are really important. Someone like me, I'm a sports guy, we're always trying to preserve those things because they're really important. Joint replacement guys, they're, they're replaced. But they also have experience with this because they're very familiar with total knee replacement. So joint replacement guys and sports guys can sort of converge partial knee replacement. And a lot of us in those subspecialties have a lot of experience doing it. So that's just a little bit about, about myself. So what I want to do is just go through a little outline of what we're going to talk about. Can you guys all see this? Okay. So, yeah, the light's a little, uh, Okay. Yeah, I think it's sort of is what it is. But, yeah. Um, you're welcome to come up closer to the TV, but first thing I want to do is go over some of the anatomy in the knee. Okay, just some basics, especially the cruciate ligaments. Have you guys all heard of an ACL? Okay, that's one of the cruciate ligaments. Then I want to go through what a total knee replacement is, which I'm sure you've heard of a total knee replacement. And we'll go over the advantages and disadvantages. And then we're going to go over the MAKO, which is the partial knee replacement. We'll go over the advantages and disadvantages. And the indications for both. When can you get a partial versus when do you need a total? Okay, so we're going to go through that. So, again, the light isn't so great here, but a normal knee, most of you know this. I'd actually look here, it's probably easier. It's your femur bone up here, right? Your kneecap, okay, your kneecap forms part of the knee. It's your patella bone. And then your tibia bone, okay? This right here, the, the space between your tibia bone and your femur bone is your knee joint, okay? And then underneath your kneecap is also part of the knee joint, okay? Now right in the middle here, this is your meniscus, the soft tissue, it's like a pad that helps distribute load, it helps protect the cartilage around your knee, and it helps protect the bone. And then on the lining of the bone is cartilage, so cartilage lines the bone. And again, it's hard to see the pictures because of the light, but the, the other things to consider are the menisci, which I just pointed out, right here, that's sitting in the middle of the knee. So there's one on the inside of your knee, there's one on the outside of your knee, okay? They help distribute the force as you step, it distributes the force through their knee so your bones are feeling all that force. They help, uh, they help with joint nutrition, lubrication of the knee, and they also provide stability. Okay, so the ligaments and the meniscus all provide stability to them. The cartilage, again, you can't see the cartilage that well on this knee, but the cartilage lines the bone in the knee joint. The cartilage is really important. Okay, so when you see, why is cartilage important? Cartilage is really important because it's, it's about a thousand times less friction than ice, if you can believe that. It's so, it's just perfectly frictionless. And it allows the bones to block, okay? You know, when you're born, you have perfect healthy cartilage that lasts for many, many years. Usually, sometimes it wears out earlier. What's also nice about cartilage is there are no nerve fibers. There's no nerves in cartilage. So that's why you never feel pain when you have healthy cartilage. But once the cartilage wears away and there's bone exposed, 
bone has free nerve endings. And as soon as that bone gets loaded without cartilage, that's when you feel pain. That's why you have pain with arthritis, okay? So these are all important structures you need. Now again, these pictures are too bright, but the cruciate ligament. So you guys have heard of the ACL. Tom Brady, everyone knows Tom Brady, Wes Welker, they both heard of ACL. The ACL, it's hard to see there, but it's right in the middle of the knee. It's this structure right in the middle of the knee. It's like a, it comes, comes right across. And then there's one in the back. I don't know if you guys can see here. This is the PCL. That's the complement to the ACL. And the reason they call cruciates is because they form a cross, like that. <coughs> so the ACL and the PCL. Now, these structures are very important for several reasons. One, stability. Okay, they prevent your knee from going too much, you know, too much translation like that. They prevent that. Okay? You don't want that much motion. It's a little bit um, creates instability in your knee. Number two, this is really important. There's nerve fibers in your ACL and your PCL, okay? The reason those nerve fibers are important is because they give you feedback to your brain. So they, when, you're, when you're hiking a mountain and you're walking on any of the ground, they tell you where you need to put your foot, where your foot is in space, okay? Those, those structures give you confidence when you're walking, running, really doing anything, okay? They can help give you balance. So again, those are really important structures I want to point out. So what is arthritis, okay? Arthritis, we've already covered it. It's basically when cartilage breaks down, right? And when the cartilage breaks down, you have bone underneath. Now who knows, any, do you guys, does anybody here have arthritis or friends with arthritis? All right, everybody, right? It's super common, right? So it, all arthritis is, once that cartilage breaks down, there's bone underneath, and because the bone has the pain, the pain, the nerve endings, you feel that pain, okay? When the cartilage is healthy, you don't feel pain, but you shouldn't. There's different types of arthritis. The most common type by far is osteoarthritis. 46% will develop arthritis in their knee, okay? One in two people will get arthritis in their knee in America. I mean, it's unbelievable, one in two. Now there's other types of arthritis, inflammatory arthritis. So examples of that, gout, rheumatoid arthritis, um, lupus can cause arthritis. This is much, much less common, but it's still something we can treat with surgery. And then post-traumatic arthritis, also much, much less common. But all that means is say you have a fracture in your knee, and then 10 years later you develop arthritis. That's a different type. But again, it can be treated with what the surgery you're talking about. So we'll pass that. Again, it's hard to see these uh, images because it'll... Can we turn this light down? I don't want to screw it. I don't want to lose it. But, um, the, the, the thing I wanted to show you here is that when you get early arthritis, it's typically in only one part of your knee. So your knee, again, has three compartments, right? There's the inside part. We call that the medial compartment right here. There's the outside part called the lateral compartment right here. And then there's underneath the kneecap, the telephemoral compartment. Three compartments. Yes. Okay. So you typically, when you get arthritis, you get it in one compartment. So this is an example where it's just on the outside, okay? So that's where you have disease in one part, but the cartilage underneath the kneecap and on the other side is good. So two out of the three look healthy. And then this is, you can't see the x-rays, but you can see it on x-rays as well. So this is just an outline of when you have early disease. So you know you may have a little defect of your cartilage early on. This can be typically people in their 30s or 40s, okay? Maybe it's a traumatic injury like a sports injury or a car accident. Now that's different. When you have an isolated cartilage defect, you know, because I'm a sports guy, I do actually cartilage procedures. So that's a whole other type of surgery. But that can be addressed surgically, but you don't want a knee replacement in that case. When you get to moderate disease, that's when a whole, one of the whole compartments has the cartilage is worn away, where it's very diffuse, but it's not the whole knee, but it's diffuse in that one area. So maybe it's the inside compartment. Once you get to that level, you can't do the cartilage procedures. It's just too much, there's just too much cartilage worn away. The cartilage procedures don't work well. That's where you want to look at the Mako, the partial knee replacement, okay? And then when you have disease in even two compartments, you can still do the Mako. <laughs> okay. So now once you get to the point where you have severe disease in your whole knee, you know, you can't, you can't use the make anymore. You gotta do a total knee replacement. Okay, to, to answer your question. Make sense? Um, what's the difference between two compartments and the whole knee? Right, so, if 
you look here, the knee has three, three compartments, we call it. Three spaces, right? So one space is here on the inside, one space is on the outside, and then one space is underneath the kneecap. So it's three total. So if you have arthritis in this compartment, that's only one of three. That's a perfect indication to do a partial knee replacement. Because all we're going to end up doing is resurfacing this part of your knee and leaving the rest of it as it is because it's healthy. If you have arthritis in, say, this compartment and this compartment, you can also do a partial where you replace this and this, but you leave this as is. Okay? And I'll go into this, but the real reason I love this, I mean, one of the reasons I really like this is because you preserve the ACL and PCL. Okay? You can't do that in a total knee replacement. They come out. Okay? Well, you said that it's <coughs> partial knee replacement, right? Yeah. So what happened in the... Uh, Arthritis is progressive. Great question. So, in that case, if it gets bad enough, you have to revise it to a total knee. And that's, okay. that's the biggest downside to this surgery. But I'll say if you're pretty selective about the patients you choose, it's pretty, the incidence of it developing until you have an arthritis in the other compartment is pretty low. And that's another, another reason why the Mako is so good is because it's robot assisted, meaning that we get a CAT scan, and we'll go into this, but we, we sort of design it around your knee, that we can dial in the appropriate tension on your knee and the appropriate position of the implants within a millimeter. And what that does is it creates perfect balance in your knee, and that prevents you from getting arthritis in the rest of your knee. The older implants we had, it was harder to get it, get it right, if it makes sense. And if you don't get it right, the other part of the knee sees more force and you tend to develop arthritis. But even then, the incidence is probably about one in five over, over 10 years. Is it set up by electronics that uh, evenly everything in the joint, new joint? Yeah, well, we'll, we'll, we'll talk more about that. How yeah. long is the uh, uh, replacement takes to go to the next one? Because it's gonna be that. If you have to do another one? Yeah. How long is the surgery? Yeah. No, no. Uh, oh. How long, do How long does it take? Yeah. Everyone's different. But I would yeah. say that the risk of that happening is less than one in five on average. So yeah. probably the 15 year risk of you getting arthritis in it. Say you had a, a partial knee replacement in just the inside of your knee. That's the most common place to do it. The risk of you getting enough arthritis where you would need surgery, a total knee replacement, is, is Less than one in five, it's probably more like one in ten. So within about fifteen years. What's the recommendation to get the replacement when you get really old and you have one old end after that you did you don't have to worry about it? Or you have to replace it because of everything depends on big pains, how big damage is. Okay, uh, some people they say, Well, I'm not gonna replace it because I can stand the pain. Right, so when right. I replace it, I don't need another replacement. So what's your recommendation? You replace it when you see there's damage is done? No, no, you only replace it when you're having enough symptoms where it's really okay. affecting your life. You don't treat the x-rays. You know what I mean? You see yeah. this in the x-rays, but it's all about the person. So it's like, a lot of people have arthritis and they do fine. But it's all about, you know, listen doc, I've gotten to the point where I can't take the medication anymore. I'm sick of okay, adjusting what I lot. do. Yeah, I'm sick of doing an injection. Yeah. And then you get to the point where, you, where you, you know, we look at the x-ray, we your imaging, and, and if, it, if it correlates with your symptoms, then we're like, look, you're a good candidate for either a partial or a total. When you do x-rays, always a good cabinet about when you see all that. Yeah, you can see because on the x-rays, you can see the joint space collapse. And when you see that, it means the cartilage is all gone. Are you talking about MRIs or? X-rays. Oh, x -rays. Yeah. All right. What's going on with the meniscus during all this? I thought the meniscus gave out. It typically gives out when you develop enough arthritis. Okay. But here's again another advantage of the Mako is that if it's just one part of your knee, we preserve the other meniscus. So when we replace, say, your inside your knee, if the outside of your knee, the lateral compartment is normal, we don't have to remove that. We just let it be. Whereas in a total knee replacement, everything comes out, even though it's normal. Right. I have another question yeah. real quick. Uh, what is the plan of titanium or uh, cobalt chromium? Oh, I mean, is it that uh, depends what the density of your bone is, or just to have everybody's bone density is within 
is very similar okay. to each other. So that's why it's called off-prone. Yeah. It's a little bit stronger than both. All right. Let me, uh, All right. Again, hard to see. Looks perfect here. Uh, that's okay. That's all right. Oh, put it up on the table. Okay, you want to see the screen? Yeah. Oh. Well, this is okay if you can't really see it. The bottom, yeah. The bottom line is a total knee replacement looks like this. So this doesn't show you the underneath the kneecap. This is a total knee replacement. So you see, you see how the, the entire tibia, we, we remove all the cartilage in the tibia, we remove your meniscus, we remove your ACL, remove your PCL, and then we remove all the cartilage on your femur all the way to the back. And then... What does that really do if you're taking the thing out? Pardon? How, how bad is it if you're taking the thing out? Well, that's what we're talking about. So, Pain-wise, people do pretty well. Function-wise, the make goes better because we preserve. You're talking function. about the movement. What you heard originally is it the same when you're going to lose it. So. The what motion. Yeah. yeah. The motion. Yeah. Everybody's different. You generally lose a little bit, but it's usually not something you even notice. Every now and then, people get what we call stiff, okay. and you lose a lot of motion, and that's one of the complications with with knee replacement. It's more common with a total knee, so it's less common. Is it uh, that, uh, uh, depends how you get your PT or uh, partially? Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. Now the main so though, you, you can't see it on this picture, but the partial knee replacement, if you can imagine, would just be this one side. Okay. <laughs> For example, if you had your inside of your knee replaced, it would just be a little. Bit more. It's the same material, though. It's the titanium. Same material, cobalt chromium. Yep. So this again is total knee replacement. So let me just go over this real quick. So total knee replacement. This thing right here, gold standard for someone who has arthritis in all three compartments in their knee. Right. Basically, your cartilage is worn down all over the knee. You failed everything else, and you're just in a lot of pain. It's a great option for that because it really 90%, nine out of ten people will do well. They feel good. Their pain is gone. They can function well. So this is a great surgery for the right patient, don't get me wrong. Um, and it's one of the most successful procedures in orthopedics. The limitations is that it's it's big surgery, it's invasive, it's a big incision, obviously. And my biggest problem with it is that you're removing, again, we're going to recover this again. Typically, you're removing healthy cartilage, healthy meniscus, and the ligaments. It's rare where you see someone have disease in their whole knee, okay? Not rare, but it's, it's not as common. So again, there's a lot of people out there who shouldn't be getting a total knee. Okay? There's a lot of people out there who probably benefit from that department. Just we know from from incidents that it's just uh, there's data out there showing how many millions of people have arthritis and how extensive it is. And there's plenty of millions of people out there who don't have arthritis. Oh yeah, totally. So this is becoming, you know, knee replacement surgery partially. It's huge. I mean, a lot of people need to see. Are you going to talk about recovery? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Okay. So partially replacement, we've already gone over this. So I want to torch you away. Now, can you guys see this at all? This is just three examples of the partial knee. So you can do it either on this. I can't see Okay. <laughs> so this is a, uh, you see the top? That's a partial on just the inside of the knee. Can you see that barely? So that's what it looks like. It's just, just it's not nearly as much replacement. The middle one is a, is a partial underneath the kneecap. So you see you have a little metal on the top of the femur and then underneath the kneecap. The bottom one is where you do two compartments. So you do the inside and the top. Okay? I know it's hard to see. Just a quick question. If you're done to and then you need the third one done, why can't you do the third you, that's that's a good question. That you could. I mean, you you reasonably. And now here's the future of total knee replacement, in my opinion. It's, we don't have it yet. Is a total knee replacement where the ACL is preserved, the PCL is preserved, but we don't have that yet. But I bet it's coming. Do you know when? I don't. Know. <laughs> I don't know. One company has it, but it doesn't work well. They have to. They have to improve the design. No, exactly. So the technology is improving. 
So this is a picture of the machine. Okay, I have a, another question, very quick. Yes. Does it affect the driving? Was it a new replacement? No, you just have to recover. Once you recover, it's What I'm fine. saying is that instead of uh, the brain tells you to, to break, right. and you push the ga pedal gas, it's not going to happen? No, once you recover, there's no there's no data that shows that your, your drive, your brake time is any worse than the closer. But you have to recover, which can be, you know, a month or so. So that's just a picture of, of the actual Mako machine. The thing on the left is the robot. And you can't see it, but it has a handle. If you can see down here, that I actually hold in my hand, and it's a burr, and it, and it basically guides me as we remove the, the rest of the cartilage that we're removing. It removes a little bit of the bone. And then those screens there are just images of your knee three-dimensionally showing us exactly what we're looking Is this totally U.S. technology? Yeah, make those a U.S. Okay. It was bought by Stryker, which is a big company. Okay, so there's my picture. You can see that, right? So see the arm, and it's just a little burr on that arm. So it literally is in my hand, and I'm looking at a screen of your knee while we're doing it, and the burr, it guides me so that you don't go outside where you're supposed to be burning. So it's... Because we get a cat, I'm going to show you, we get a CAT scan and it builds a knee, builds a picture of your knee into the computer. Yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing. Um, so again, it provides you with a 3D model view based on the CAT scan, but allows you to just move on the knee, right? So this, these are the steps, okay? This is the steps the way to make it work. We get a personalized plan. So what that does, what that means is you get a CAT scan of your knee, okay? And the CAT scan has cuts, you know, that one, two millimeter cuts of your knee, slices of your knee exactly. And it builds basically a three-dimensional image of your knee. We then give this to my colleagues at Stryker. They put it into the Mako system, if you will. And it, it, it forms a, a, um, a plan for you on where exactly we're going to remove the, the disease cartilage and the disease bone. And then we get a picture like that on the left of your specific knee. And we figure out what size components we're going to use. Now we can basically we can make a sketch. Yeah. Now we can adjust the sizes in the OR if something changes or I don't like the way it feels. But at least going in, we have a very good idea of what size we're going to use. We have a very good idea of how thick the, the plastic's going to be, all these things. And it's very rare where you have to deviate. How did they manage the pool? Why not? Manage the what? It was all it was much more that? feel, much more guessing. Well, not sort of guessing. I mean there's things we do, but this is definitely more accurate. There's no question. That's why so we're giving these talks. Pardon? So you heal faster. You don't necessarily heal faster, you just heal. It's more common that your implants are in a perfect position. Meaning that when, if your implants are in a perfect position, it prevents you from developing arthritis in the rest of your knee, and it prevents you from developing pain. So it's just a more accurate way of doing the surgery. What's the plastic you refer to? I thought this was a chrome or something. Yes, yeah, so see the white in the middle? This is a total knee. Oh, okay. This is plastic. Yeah, so it's, it's called uh, polyethylene is what it is. And that goes in? Very strong. Partial. We've been using this for 50 years okay. in knee and hip replacements. This becomes your cartilage, the plastic. It becomes your cartilage. It has no friction to it. Meniscus is gone. Oh. Meniscus is gone. So anytime you do a total knee, you have to take the meniscus out on both sides. Not in this. You can preserve it in the other so next, this is in the operating room. So once we get in the operating room, we have your CAT scan. It's all programmed into the, into the Mako system. And then, you know, you're pretty much, we have a great plan going in. And I got to tell you, I haven't deviated yet from the, from the plan. There's sizes. So it's basically from 1 to 10, the sizes. And typically, if we're going in with a size 3 plan, I haven't deviated from that. So it's, it's pretty accurate. Um, and then, you know, those images at the top left, that just gives you an idea of what I'm looking at in the middle of surgery so that we're aligned correctly um, in, in several different planes. Um, and again, just to reiterate, it prevents you from moving outside the disease part. So then after surgery, to your point about rehab. So typically, if you have one compartment replaced, you go home the same day. So it's same day surgery, which is nice. You know, for the total day, you're, you're in the hospital for at least two or three days. What we've done, what we've been doing is we have you go home the same day and then a physical therapist come either that night or the next day and then a visiting therapist come for three or four days to help you work on your gait. Because you're walking right away, okay? And it's uncomfortable, but you're walking. And you typically need crutches for at least a couple of days but the therapist helps you with your gait. 
Then you come back to the office about seven days out after surgery. We get any of the stitches out if there are any stitches left. Some guys use staples, whatever. And then we get x-rays to make sure everything looks okay. And then we send you to outpatient physical therapy for about probably four to six weeks. Now the incision is usually healed by about 10 days, seven to 10 days. So um, you're, you know, you're walking, you can get on a, a stationary bike within about 10 days or so. Are you kidding? No, no. You, yeah, a stationary bike. I wouldn't run at 10 days, but you can get a stationary bike. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or I wouldn't even walk. I wouldn't even take a long walk at 10 days. I'd probably give it more like three to four weeks. Um, but in terms of recovery time, it's basically half. So a total knee replacement. Typically, you're not really back to kind of normal to about three months. Partial knee replacement, you're back to kind of normal about six weeks. Total knee replacement, you're not really at your best till six months. This, you're not really at your best till about three months. That's what I'd say. So it's about, it cuts everything in half. Some people flop. I mean, I had a few patients who within three weeks, it's nothing. They're literally done. <coughs> They're healthy. It's the he healthy people, yes. Just age, healthier people. Age, age is, it's, it's, no. it's physiologic age. So you can be 85, but if you walk every day and, and you don't take that many medications and you're, you're not very overweight, that type of thing, those people do very well. Your pain pressure is very high. Right. Gotcha. And everybody's different too. People people feel pain differently. There's so many variables. But on average, the recovery time is about half compared to the total. What does ROM mean? Range of motion. Oh, okay. Range of motion. Yeah. So we are going to Okay, so just we're, we're almost done. I just want to go over a summary of what I think are the benefits of this compared to a total knee. Yeah. Again, here's the big take home message here is that if you have arthritis in your knee or you know someone has arthritis in your knee, make sure that you understand where the arthritis is. If it's in one compartment and maybe even two compartments, this is really something you want to consider, okay? And I feel very strongly in it. Ask your doctor. Just ask them. Say, say, doctor, where is my arthritis? Is it in my whole knee? Is it in one compartment? Is it in two compartments? I can tell. If you come see me, I'll tell you. Can the person tell? I can tell exactly where my you probably can't, but you have to be able to read x-rays too. So you want to ask your doctor, okay? Because sometimes you feel pain here, but it could be in both sides, okay? But the, I feel very strong about this again, because I'm a sports guy. So again, my biggest, you know, this is one, 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 so it would be one, two, three. But my biggest, um, the reason I favor this the most is because you're only resurfacing the disease part. The, the healthy parts of your knee are preserved. And again, the most, in my opinion, it's not the cartilage, it's the meniscus and the cruciate ligament because they play a really important role in giving you confidence. So again, it gives you that feedback. Where is my knee in space? When I'm hiking, when I'm skiing, golfing, where does my knee? And when you, if you have a total knee replacement, your pain goes away, but you lose the confidence because you don't have those ligaments, you don't have the meniscus, and you lose a little stability. With this, it really preserves those structures. That's why, I think that's why it's the biggest advantage, okay? Other advantages, a lot of other advantages. One, it's a smaller incision. Two, you get the rehabs quicker, okay? You go home quicker, it's less pain. Those are advantages. Here's another advantage. With the robot, and we already covered this, we can get the components positioned within one millimeter where they need to be, okay? It takes a lot of human error out of it, and it's not available yet in a total new replacement because they don't have a robot yet. That does it. And again, the reason why that's important is because it, it, if you get everything lined up perfectly, it really limits the chance you're going to get arthritis in the other parts of your knee, and it limits the chance that you're going to fail, that you're going to have pain where we can surface. Other benefits, I know this is getting a little redundant, but bone sparing, that's really important. The reason I say that, if you ever need another surgery, okay, sometimes people have heart total knee replacements. They need another surgery. It gets infected. It doesn't work. If you, if you God forbid, ever have, ever have to go back and do revision surgery, it's tough with a total knee replacement because you've lost a lot of bone. It becomes much more complicated. 
For the partial knee replacement, it's much, much easier because most of your bone and structures are preserved, so it makes the revision surgery much easier. So especially if you're younger, especially if you're 60s or so, and you're a healthy person, if you ever needed another knee surgery, say when you're 85, it's much easier if you have a partial in your knee instead of a total because it makes the surgery a lot less risky and a lot more likely that you're going to do well. Um, there's a few other benefits, but those are the major benefits in my opinion. So I put a couple just quick questions up here and then you guys can ask questions. You did a ton of questions. So who's a good candidate for this? Now we already went over this to some degree. But typically, it's someone who has disease in a, you know, one or two compartments, not all three. If you have all three, the only sur best surgery for you is a total knee surgery. It's not going to work. But typically, it's pain with activity. So, you know, especially osteoarthritis, it's the more you do, the more it hurts kind of thing. And then, you know, it's sore at night, that type of thing, after a busy day, and it gets stiff. So when you're getting up after being seated for a long time or lying down, it feels stiff. That's classic. And you typically fail to respond to all those things you mentioned, medications, you know, injections. You, 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 most people try these things, and sometimes they really give you a lot of relief, and people can live with them forever. Other people, it works maybe for a few weeks, a few months, but then they're like, listen, I can't take it anymore. And then I think you're a good candidate. So that's the best candidate. And then, how long can you expect it to last? Now, there's no, we don't have the answer to this yet. But based on the total knee replacement data, if it's well aligned and you're of average weight, probably 25, 30 years on average, it should last you. <laughs> so it's good. I mean, it's, 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 it lasts a long time. I mean, the older implants, you know, last about 20 years, but. But you know those implants are from the 70s and 80s. And it depends them. how you use it too. It depends how you use it. Absolutely. So if you're 60 and you're running marathons, this will wear out quicker, a okay. lot quicker. Which again, that's why if you're younger, this is also a great option because if you do need another surgery, the, the second surgery is a lot safer, a lot easier, and you tend to better off. You know, though some of those points, it's uh, it's relevant to the replacement of the shoulder as well. 100%. Yeah. Oh, you had it? Yeah. Right. I got a nice piece of metal to show us. Pardon? I got a nice piece of metal you need. Oh, nice. Got it. Got it from the V. All right. Yes. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Oh, that's it. Yeah. That's a joy. Oh, okay. I love the feeling of Wow, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Two days at the same time with the partial. Absolutely. So there's really interesting data out there, okay? So, so some guys, some surgeons feel if you have a total knee on one side, but on the other side, say you have these only in one compartment. Some guys say just do a total because yeah, you get on I disagree. Because there's data out there, you know, we have a lot of journals in orthopedics, but two of the most famous journals, there are good articles that have shown that people who have partials are more satisfied with a better function with a partial versus a total. And this is data from 15, 20 years ago when we didn't have a robot. This is when you're using the old partial knee replacement. So it's telling. It's very telling. So in my opinion, 100%. I mean, if, if you have, if you don't have a disease that requires a total knee, it's very rare that I'm going to say, we got to do a total knee. Now, there's one caveat to all of this, is that doing a total knee replacement for anybody, even if you have a little disease, is a much, not much, but it's a more reliable way of getting rid of your pain, okay? There's definitely a higher chance, although it's slight, that you're going to still have pain after doing a partial versus a total. Because when you do a total, all the cartilage is gone. All the parts that could possibly cause you pain is gone. Meniscus is gone. Everything that could cause you pain. You do a partial, you may have a little wear in another part of your knee that may still cause pain. That's possible. So that's that's one thing to keep in mind. But again, the data really supports if, if, if we know where it is, and even on x-rays, you typically want to get an MRI, and you can identify, and it's typically you can point to where it hurts the most, although I told you that sometimes, typically you can point to it, the outcomes are pretty much the same as you do with your pain. Now, if you're limping, you know, you're going to 
Limping typically means you're favoring it because it hurts. That's all it means. So, well, it hurts. It typically means it hurts. So you're trying. Oh, okay. I need two knees and two hips. Okay, this is my good side. This is my bad side. Okay, now this doctor tells me I have to have this done first before my knee. I have to crawl because when you proceed to set up the back, they do the front. And so in order, I have to crawl in order to do it. And I haven't been crawling in four years. Wait, you want you to what? crawl to, before you do surgery? I really hurt before it's done. Does that make sense to run? No. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because he said this needs to support this. Oh, I see what you're saying. That's a tough problem. I mean, if you need four joints replaced, that's a tough. Yeah, but it's not right away. Yeah, I would definitely would do it right away. I would stage it. But I think he's right. I mean, I would do the hip first. Absolutely. But I'm not crawling yet because of the new procedure. Oh, he's saying he wants you to be in that much pain. Yeah, I'm not. I mean, I disagree with that. I think you could you could stage it where you do a hip, you know, and then six maybe three six weeks. Well, there may be. Gotcha. The anterior approach. So it comes from the front. Yeah. Yeah. It's a it's a certain approach to it. Doesn't have to be done that way. Doesn't have to be done that way, but it's a it's a good option. It's a better way. Well, let's recover. The newest way. It's the newest way. Less pain. Less. Yes, I would say typically less pain right away. But in my opinion, yeah, my partner uh, Satchery does anterior, hip, so he does that approach. Well, I'm not gonna have an MRI check to see what's going on. Do you use the make of a bone on a hip as well? Not yet, but it's probably coming. They're, they're trying because it's great to come. <laughs> no, I know. What's the medical stance for his inventor claim? No, I think it's, it's, it's I think it's abbreviation. For it something. is an abbreviation for something. I actually don't know. They, you know, it's got the little shark fin yeah. thing, which how it it's ends up like a big shark. But I, I don't know. It's a good question. I really don't know. But now Stryker owns it, and Stryker, you know, I'm not biased at all because I have no. Skin in the game, these companies. The Strikers are great companies, so I'm glad they own it. The, the guys we work with are great. You said that uh, the demo hand is guiding you. It's is guiding you. It laser? No, it's a, it's a burr. So it's removing the diseased cartilage oh, of bone. See, it's like, you, I hold it like a pencil. And if you go too far out of the mark, I'm looking at it's like a, it's almost like you're, you have a footprint that you're trying to follow. And if you go even a millimeter out of the footprint, it stops you. Yeah, really? It stops your hand. Yeah, it locks your that's hand. It's great. Exactly. That's why it's so fail safe. It's, it takes away human error. Yeah, it's impressive. Does Medicare cover this? Yeah. Actually. So this is like, in terms of insurance, it's like any any total knee replacement, partial knee replacement. It's all. I think that everybody gets reimbursed the same. Hip yeah. replacement. Yeah. So Medicare definitely covers. No. no, no. Medicare covers a certain range of things. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But most insurance will cover this because it's it's been shown that people do so well that insurance will cover. It. Um, it says on your paper that often you can perform it through a small incision over. Oh room. yeah. When? What would you do if you couldn't do that? Well, you would just extend it a little bit. But oh, okay. The incision would just be bigger. You just make a little bit bigger incision. But we can, the incision we use is definitely smaller than a total. Okay. So my incision, I... It's bigger than a left. An arthroscopic? Uh, much bigger. So yeah. your incision is typically maybe four inches, five inches. So let's say like that. Whereas a total knee is more like that. So it's maybe a little bit more than half the size of the total. Well, first of all, what um, uh, results, bad results could come from it? What right, so anytime you do, yeah, anytime you do any sort of replacement the knee, the, the most, the biggest complication we're worried about is infection. Now, 
infection, the risk is relatively low. It's definitely below 1%. I'm talking about a deep infection. Not an infection in your skin, but where the implants get infected. That is dangerous. How about bone infection? And bone infection. So they kind of go, it's like kind of one and the same. The risk again is well below 1%. It's higher if you have diabetes, higher if you're a smoker, higher, those are the big, the big ones. But it's still, still very low. Now again, this is where the advantage of the makeup comes in because if you get a deep infection, you do have that stuff has to come out, mm -hmm. and it's much easier when you have just a little bit to take out versus a total knee replacement. That's why I say again that you know, if, especially if you're young, there's always a chance you're gonna need surgery again, and it's much better <coughs> if you have a partial versus a total when you have to have a visit surgery. Because you know, like you said, if you do get a bone infection, some of that bone has to come out. If you already have a lot of bone missing, it just creates problems where, think about it, if you have too much bone missing, you're looking at something, we're just finding a way to keep your knee in you know what I mean, so. But that's the most worrisome risk, the risk is relatively low, um, again, higher diabetics. Okay, doctor's recommend, I'm just going to ask how they should be done. I've done a lot of these, because I, I haven't done as many since I've been back in the East Coast, but where I was a fellow, so again, I do mostly sports surgery, or chapter surgery, but this is the one, you know, I did a lot of total shoulders, in, in terms of arthroplasty, we call it. A lot of total shoulders, a lot of partial knees, because it goes along with sports. But the reason I was so excited about this, we used a Mako in Los Angeles, so we had a Mako where I was a fellow, so we, every Tuesday we would do like four or five weeks. So how many do you know? 50-ish, maybe. But I've also done the old way, I've probably done 30 the old way, and it's night and day. I mean, the old way is tricky. And to be honest, I'm not as confident the old way. This way, it's it's just straightforward. It's, 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 it's you know, I feel super confident with it. I'm sure Dr. Sastry feels super confident. It's a great technology. Yeah. The old way is tricky. And that's I think that's part of the reason why you haven't heard a lot about this, because yeah. a lot of orthopedic <laughs> surgeons. Yeah, I mean, some people I think have it, some people have, but I think the old technology was tricky. So I think a lot of guys didn't like it. They'd rather just do a total knee, it's a little bit more reliable. But this is this is a lot more straightforward, this technology, than it used to be. Which it's makes come it... forward, and many areas has come forward your medicine. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. And it's going to keep coming forward. Like I said, I think the next thing is a total knee where they preserve your ACL and PCL. That's not really there yet, but... Maybe I'll do another one of these in five years, and I don't know. What if you had some AC? I'm not even sure what it was anymore. An ACL tear? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's been rechecked. Yeah. Oh, then that's fine. Okay. But I think if your ACL is torn, and we call it an ACL deficient knee, it doesn't really matter. You can still do this surgery. You just, at baseline, probably have a little less function than someone who has an ACL. You may not even realize it, because you, oh, you probably gotten used to it. Yeah. But but it's still fine to do this. You probably just don't get the same advantage that someone who has an ACL would get because it's preserved. Yes, sir. You mentioned three compartments. Yeah. Okay. What are those three? Yeah, yeah. So it's the an anterior. Yeah, the anterior. So if you look from the side. Yeah. The anterior is your kneecap. Yeah. So underneath your kneecap, there's cartilage. Okay. And then it articulates, meaning it, it creates a part of the joint with the top of your femur bone. Okay? Okay. You follow me? Yeah. So that's just one part of your knee. Yeah. So that's number one, underneath the kneecap. Number two is the medial compartment, the inside. Right. Right here. So you have one meniscus here, it's called the medial meniscus. You have the inside of your femur bone, and you have the inside of your tibia bone. That's the medial compartment. That's compartment number two. Compartment number three is on the outside. So another meniscus here. Cartilage here. This is it. This is the outside of your bone. The outside of your tibia bone. That's the third one. Okay. So, oh, if you yeah, have, yeah. if you've got arthritis in one of those areas, let's just say you have it under the knee. Most cap. commonly, it's right here inside. But what if you have it under the knee cap? Yeah. Do you You're still do a partial. Yeah. For that, who? Any one of these. So if you had, so I just, so one of my family members, for example. Okay, we're doing that. Has that exact same thing. He had a fracture in his patella, 
He's got terrible arthritis on his kneecap. This is a perfect surgery. Mm -hmm. I told him, like, there's no way I'm going to let you do a total knee replacement. No way. Everything in here is perfect for him. And he's a skier, you know, he plays tennis, he bikes. It's crazy to me to get a total knee replacement. All he needs to do is resurface this and this. And that's the way we can do that. We can do this in part, we can do this in part, we can do this in part, we can even do two out of three. Do this and this. Oh, yeah. Now that's it's much less common. common. Yeah. And it's a little controversial. You know, if you ever needed that, it would be a long discussion. But it's definitely an option. Interesting. Yeah. How many meniscus are there in the knee? There's two. So there's one on the inside here and then one on the outside. They look connected here, but they're not that connected. There's a little space here. So they're actually separate. <clears throat> well, is it in the same meniscus or is it in two? Or who knows? Yeah, I would find out if it's both, if it's both menisci or if it's just one. Torn and shredded is kind of the same thing. So if you go to your primary and you say, you know, I'm having pain yeah. in my knees, yeah, is yeah. the first step an x ray or an already CT? X ray. Definitely x ray. Yeah, I would only get a CAT scan if we were planning on doing the surgery. I can, I can determine whether you need the surgery, whether you're a good candidate with just x-rays and just your story and just your medical history. I'd only get the CAT scan if we were planning the surgery because it's a lot of radiation. And it's not a ton, but it's enough where I'm saying, I don't want to just send you a CAT scan. You know what I mean? I can see enough in your x-rays and we don't need to do that unless you're having surgery. Yeah, you're welcome. Any future topics? I don't know what to put on. <laughs> Any future topics for me? Well, you know, I'll help you. What do you do? <laughs> Anything you want. I don't know. What I do, what I, I do a lot of hip arthroscopy. Well, or I, I do cartilage procedures. We do cartilage procedures. Um, you know, cartilage procedures is, is typically in like middle age, like, you know, 30s, 40s, 50s. So, you know, the knee replacement is, is typically a little bit more old, a little older, like 50s, 60s, 70s, uh, 80s. 80s, 90s even. Um, but yeah, we could, I mean, that's one of the things I specialize in is cartilage procedures. If you want to get up with that. Can you explain that? I do shoulder. Can you explain the cartilage procedure a little bit? Yeah, sure. So cartilage procedures briefly, once you get to the point we're talking now, when you get diffuse cartilage loss and say one compartment, no cartilage. You know from cartilage, okay. Hold on, hold on. So, I, that wouldn't work for you, unfortunately, a cartilage procedure. You need a partial or a total knee replacement. And what questions were, I've had recent x-rays, and uh, what questions would I have to ask to determine whether or not I'm a candidate for a partial? So you need to find out where you have arthritis. Is it in your whole knee? Is it in one compartment? Is it in two compartments? Is it in two compartments? You want to repeat it? Sanford orthopedics, they would know by just asking them. Oh, uh, 100%. They'll know. Yeah, yeah. So ask them how many compartments do I have arthritis? Say, you know, I know there's three compartments in the knee. I want to know how many of those three I have arthritis. The only thing you can ask me, you ask me, am I a candidate for a partial knee replacement? You know, do you think I'm a candidate? I'm actually. Expecting to get some sort of injection, civis, civis. Civis, yeah, that's a good, I mean, that's worth trying. It's a cartilage like you're saying. Well, the injections in the simvis, these things can buy you time. They can, they can give you relief for a long time. Yeah, did four years, really. Yeah, exactly. And some people, that's fine. They're like, I'll do an injection every three months, and they, they do that for years, and then eventually it doesn't work anymore, and then they say, I want surgery. But it's definitely an option, especially if you don't want surgery, you can do injections. Right. Well, with you, it could be. Yeah. There are lots of things. Go ahead. Um, at your hospital, yes, you're yeah. practicing now. Right. But um, and you want to be sure you stay in your hospital because that's good. But um, other people, do they have to ask at their regular orthopedic doctor if they would do it? The surgery would he recommend it without you asking? Is my real question. The orthopedic surgeon? Yes. I would think so. I would hope so. It depends, though, on... If he knows. It if he... Yeah, so the, the advantage of the, the Mako is the, I think we're the only hospital that has the Mako oh, in, it is. you know, north of Massachusetts. I know there's one in Mass. There's, there isn't one in New Hampshire. There's an East Coast. And I don't think there's one in Portland. 
No, they're at home. They're in Richmond. Yeah. So that's why, you know, York York really took a big step in purchasing this. I mean, we thought they were really smart because the, I'll tell you right now. You know, I've been in California, I've been in Boston. This is the best technology for this surgery. And it doesn't matter if you're a sports guy or, or, or a joint replacement guy. Because we're the guys who know sports guys and joint replacement guys. And Sastry is my partner, he's a joint replacement guy. Everyone agrees this is the best technology. Thank you. You're right there. But anyway, I would, uh, I think if, a, if someone does enough of these partial knee replacements the old way, it's still, a good, it still can work very well. And then, but you just have to make sure they do a lot of it. Because if you're doing it the old way, where you're not using the robot, there's clearly data that shows the guy who does 30 of them a year versus the guy who does five of them a year does a much better job. So if you have a guy, say in Portland, for example, Portland's pretty busy, who does you know 50 partial knee replacements a year. And Dr. Uses, Becker. Dr. Becker, sure. You know yeah, I, I don't know him personally, I've heard of him. Mm -hmm. But for example, maybe he does 50 a year and he uses the, what's called the Oxford, which is the yeah. old version of this. He's probably great at it. And I, I'd be, I think he does a good job, I would think. It's, it's really where you want to be careful with someone who does the Oxford who only does five or 10 a year. That's true. Where if that's where the make go, it's just, it's fail safe. It's like, it's just easier, it's more straightforward, it's, it's, it limits human error. Is the make the only robotic? Brand? No, it's the best one. There's okay. there's the, something called Blue Belt, which is another version. Um, and there's one other, I don't recall the name, that may not even be FDA approved. But there is at least one other. Um, but it just doesn't have the same market share. And it's not, apparently the technology isn't as good. I've never used it. Are they using this kind of technology in other joints in the body? Not yet, but it's coming. It's coming in the hip. I mean, I would think within the year. What about elbows? Does anybody do anything with elbows? <laughs> I, mean, I do a lot of things with elbows, but, but this, not yet. But same thing. But elbow elbow replacement is is much, much less common okay. than knee replacement. Much less common. Very rare you need an elbow replacement unless you have rheumatoid arthritis. Um, which I don't think you probably what do. You do? What do you do for what? Rheumatoid arthritis? No. You got elbows. Your elbows. Well, it depends where it is. I'd have to see your expert. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But I don't you, it's you possible. You may you may need a an elbow replacement. It's possible. But this technology isn't available yet for the elbow. Again, it's probably common. I just couldn't tell you what year. Is this a technology that can be uh, swapped for replacing the elbow, for for example? So yeah, that's not what. Tell me, said not yet. Probably not in the yet. future. Probably in the future. Oh, it's coming now. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. I would think so. They're so definitely working on the hip. The hip is the next one. So what's the story if you have some problem with your elbow? Mm -hmm. Nothing. It depends. It depends where your arthritis is. If it, if I it's, mean, from a, a surgical procedure standpoint. Yeah, it depends. It depends where you have arthritis. Is it the whole elbow? Oh, there is something in case guys do it. Right? Oh, yeah. You, there's a total elbow out there. But it's... You only want it for a specific patient because you literally cannot lift more than about five pounds once you have that surgery. It's, well, it. Exactly. <laughs> it's not something you, you want to do lightly without really thinking about it. So, that's a whole other story, but I'm ha happy to see you if you want to talk about it. Give you my card. Yes, sir. Is, is it fair to ask, why do you have joint pain when the weather changes? It's because the bone is exposed. And there's there's nerve endings on the bone, and the, even changes in the like barometric pressure, the humidity, the temperature can irritate nerve endings. Nerve endings are very sensitive, and that's when you feel that ache. And it's because the cartilage the cartilage protects it. When the cartilage is gone, it's just exposed. Any any changes like putting weight on it, and even changes again in the temperature and the humidity. Then it'll it'll give you a sensation in your in your knee or hip, wherever. It is. Well, when your joint doesn't ache at all for months on end, and then all of a sudden that you get a terrific pain, and you you relate it to the fall in barometric pressure or change well, in temperature. It, yeah, partially, absolutely. The other thing is the way arthritis works, and people get are sort of baffled by it because it, it's weird. You know, I find this all the time. 
people come in and they say, I don't get it. I've had a, you know, I tell them, you've had arthritis for 20 years. They're like, I didn't feel it until two weeks ago when I took over my dog. That's the way it works. It's, it builds and builds and builds and builds until it gets to the point where you feel it. Because as long as you even have a little bit of cartilage left, you still may not feel it. But there's like a straw that breaks the camel's back, and you twist it or something, you trip over the dog, something like that. And then it starts. And the way it works is it flares up, and then it settles down, and then you feel good, and then it flares up again. It could be the weather, it could be walking. But it's kind of like once you get to that point, you're kind of the kind of the cats out of the bag, if you will, and then it just kind of keeps coming back, coming back. But that's the natural history is that you have know, flare-ups. It settles down, flares, settles down, flares. Settles down. I have an opinion about, uh, um, uh, I don't know who said it, but they say there is no pain. I bet it is in your hand. There's certain that's a whole other discussion of the septum <laughs> level, you can <laughs> shut it off. Well, that's a whole other discussion. There's all sorts of theories about pain, why some people have more pain than others. And, and you know, no one knows the right answer, but it's a, it's, there's so much complexity to pain. You know, the part of it's genetic, part of it's yeah, how you were raised, part of it's the medications you're taking. Yeah, I'm not talking about me. I, uh, yeah. I sometimes I don't think about it, and I don't feel it when I see yeah. like, yeah, it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, and I'll tell you, there's a lot of people out there walking around with bone on bone arthritis. Who are, they, they're like, I feel fine. Somehow, a lot of it's mental. There's no question. Do you recommend an active still walk? Oh yeah, walking. Walk yeah. Not enough. I do stretching every day. I think stretching's good. I think walking's good. It's not great. But as long as you're not, well, I would keep it to less than probably two miles. Now, ideally, if you want cardiovascular activity, the best way is swimming. Second would probably be a stationary bike. I think it's swimming is better. Swimming, I think, is the best. I think swimming's the best. I agree. Swimming is the best. Treadmill? Not good. Too much load. Swimming, bike, elliptical machine. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Oh yeah. Much less load on your joints. Exactly. Or you elevate the seat. Well, that's that's a good point. <laughs> yeah, there is a little bit different. All right, any other questions? All right, nice meeting everybody. I, I, I think my car here maybe wants it.